Detective Comics Annual Number 1, written by Tony S. Daniel, art by Romano Molinar and Pere Perez. Uh, this issue is a Black Mask slash Mad Hatter issue, and we open up with some cops driving up to Arkham Asylum, and we see Jeremiah Arkham is talking to Black Mask, saying like, Oh, hey, remember how we featured you last time in Detective Comics number 9, and I gave you back your mask, and then you, like, were knocked out by Batman and put back into our care? Uh, as it turns out, that didn't happen. And, in fact, he's been hypnotized this whole time to think that Black Mask was here, but he actually escaped that night. So Black Mask hasn't been around in Arkham Asylum, and Jim Gordon shows up and says, like, yeah, he's been gone. Uh, you need to tell me who he's talking to in here so I can put him back in uh, solitary confinement. So let me cut to Batman, who's at a carnival. And there's a new villain called Mad Bull, who's just a really hulked out dude wearing a bull mask, just crashing into everything. And he ends up throwing uh, or crashing into a roller coaster that... Batman then sees there's a cart coming down, so he throws some batarangs right in the wheel tracks in order to stop it. And then as he looks around for Mad Bull, he gets snuck up on and uh, hit in the back with a full-on, like, wooden beam. So let me cut back to Arkham, and Gordon's talking to Clayface, because I guess Black Mask and Clayface had a thing. And Clayface is like, yeah, I didn't like Roman. He's a, he was mind-controlling me, but I'm sure as hell not talking to no cops. And Jim Gordon's like, oh, so you're just, you're just going to be his bitch then? And he's like, ah, blah, blah, you don't know nothing, Gordon. So then Gordon pulls out Clayface's pain medication, which I guess he has for whatever reason. And Clayface is like, give it to me or I'll kill everyone you love. He's like, or you could just tell me what I need to know. So then we cut back to the carnival and Mad Bull makes his way to a carousel that has all of the heads cut off of the like animals on it. And I guess he wanted them, but Batman sneaks up on him and knocks him out and realizes, like, oh, wait, he was hypnotized. And I'm willing to bet that if I take some samples from him and from those carousel animals, I'll be routed right back to Black Mask. So then we get a short little thing, like, I guess the next day where Bruce Wayne rides in on a horse to Alfred, who's just like, hey, here are the samples you wanted. Uh, turns out they match, but nothing about Black Mask. And he's like, oh, well, I'm sure it's somebody that has something to do with mind control or hypnosis. And we pull up a whole horde of people that I guess were part of the False Face Society, which happened pre-New 52, but we're just folding it into continuity anyway. And he explains how it was a whole group led by Black Mask. They all had some sort of like mind control power or something like that. And once he went to jail... It all fell apart. So now we're looking for anyone else who has any mind control stuff. And we zoom in on the picture of Mad Hatter and then cut to a circus clown who looks exactly like Mad Hatter. But they're not saying that. They just say, oh, hey, the cops are here at the carnival. They're raiding the place. Uh, and this guy named, I don't know. Mr. Dempsey, I think it's like Edgar Dempsey, he uh, he comes in and he's like, hey, do you know where my bodyguard is? And he's like, oh, your bodyguard hired me to protect you. Right this way, sir. So he leads him into this tent and then knocks him out and delivers him to Black Mask. And what I can only assume is other members of the False Face Society, but they're not all wearing masks because that's that's what was supposed to be on the carousel animals, were the masks. That's your That's your twist. I don't think it's said until later. So Batman meets up with uh, Jim Gordon, gets some more backstory on how in Arkham Asylum, Black Mask actually went kind of crazy because Edgar Dempsey was the one he left in charge to take care of the masks. And he was supposed to use the masks in order to influence the jury to let Black Mask's normal guy go. Like, Ed, what's his name? Sionis, Roman Sionis. So he didn't do that. He got betrayed and then he had to plea insanity in order to get out of it and batman's like okay well if we're talking about mind control i'm like 99 percent sure mad hatter is going to have something to do with it so they cut back over to the carnival black mask is trying to break uh edgar i'm already blanking on his last name again edgar's mind and they end up throwing him around a little bit until finally he's like i'll i built up an immunity but i'll take you there as long as you don't kill me and they're like fine whatever let's go 
So then we see Tweedledum and Tweedledee get attacked by Batman because he's looking for Mad Hatter. They, I guess, give him up, but we don't see that happen. They just say, yeah, you got nothing on us, Batman. He's like, let's find out. So then we cut to the Gotham Museum of Natural History, and they're making their way through, and they get to an exhibit of a bunch of like Native Americans all wearing masks, and they don't look anything like the False Face Society mask. And Black Mask is like, what What the hell is this? And he's like, oh, the, the guy, he experimented on him. He changed him. And then Roman's like, oh, my God, you suck so hard. So he tries killing Edgar, and Edgar's like, ah, I can't do that now. I'm under protection. So then... He's stabbed through the chest with a spear because Black Mask has other ways of doing things. And all of the people in the display wearing the fake masks or the real masks, I guess, all start attacking the False Face Society. So it's an all-out brawl. And wouldn't you know it, the circus clown reveals himself to be Mad Hatter. Who would have thought? So then it's... It's honestly like a back and forth here so many times. But the long and short of it is that... Roman almost gives up his mask because he thinks Mad Hatter has a drop on him. But then Batman shows up, crashes the party, and they even out the battle a little more. They have a literal, like, sigh battle where they're just trying to mind control each other. And as they're doing so, Batman comes in, kicks Black Mask in the face, cracks his mask, which then causes this huge beam of light, to which Batman then just reaches out, takes hold of the mask, and then we cut to, like, a day later... When Batman says, like, I don't remember anything after the white light, but somehow I managed to make it out of there, had all of them in custody, and delivered the black, ma- the black mask, like actual mask, to you for evidence. And he's like, wow, all right, well, glad we didn't have to wrap up that story. So then we see Roman has been put back in Arkham, and uh, Dr. Arkham is put him in an even smaller solitary confinement cell because he did have some amenities before. And that's it. That really is all there is to it. Um... I'm, I had not read, I believe Tony S. Daniel was actually on the actual Batman comic just before the New 52. I might be incorrect on that, but I'm willing to bet that this Black Mask story was like the thing that he was doing right as they transitioned. And I guess he just really wanted to wrap up that. And they were like, look, we can't involve any like pre-New 52 stuff. So they just gave him that one tie-in and then this annual. And they're like, okay, you're good. You told your story, got it out of your system. Um, I might be entirely wrong on that, but I think that that makes sense as to what happened. As for this issue, it's fine. It's an okay issue. Um, Standalone on its own. I wouldn't even say it's really Batman. And once again, from the detective standpoint, like, I don't know. It doesn't really feel like there's any sort of detectiving. And that's fine. Detective Comics doesn't have to be focused on, like, the procedural aspect of it. But it was starting out on that so hard. And now it's just like, I threw Tweedledum into Tweedledee. And then I got some information. Okay, cool. So overall, I'd say this is... This is like a solid 7. It's fine. It's unoffensive. It does nothing particularly wrong, but it's also doing nothing particularly amazing either. It's competent in every way. Um, There are two artists on it. I couldn't really tell where the transition happened, so they did a good job at imitating each other at the very least. Um, But yeah, no, it's, it's just a fine annual in general it's not one to be remembered as an all-timer but it might be the wrap-up to tony s daniel's previous arc so if you know of that might be worth checking out